Logan jumped. Then he turned to face Henry, the man who had single-handedly run the marshmallow room since the factory opened 50 years earlier. Henry had always been like a grandfather to him, even when Logan's own grandfather, the original candy maker and founder of Life is Sweet, was still alive. Since the candy-making contest a few months back, Logan had been so busy that his usual morning visits with Henry had become less frequent. But with his mess of white hair and easy smile, Henry was the only grown-up Logan didn't mind seeing right now. Can we go back to the marshmallow room? Logan asked, tugging on Henry's sleeve. He knew they'd have privacy there. Henry guarded the marshmallows the way a mama bird guarded her eggs and he was extremely choosy about who he let get too close. Plus, the walls of the marshmallow room were made of a special tinted glass that allowed Henry to see out, but kept people from seeing in. Henry insisted the walls were tinted to keep the room cool, but Logan suspected that was just an excuse. Without waiting for an answer, Logan took off at a run. He darted through crowds of smiling guests, their arms laden with bags of free treats. He did his best not to meet anyone's eyes, and pretended he didn't hear their whispered comments. Not being friendly was uncharacteristic of him, but he couldn't handle even one more person gripping him on the shoulder and offering words that were supposed to make him feel better but had the opposite effect. Comments like, you're always a winner to us, or this must be tough, but hang in there, your time will come. Or if it was a particularly nosy or thoughtless journalist, your grandfather won, then your dad won. What's it like watching your father's company produce the contest-winning candy when you are the first member of your family in three generations to lose? He told them the truth, but no one seemed to believe it. 